the gut has profound influences beyond just the local, how does the probiotics and the environment in your gut nurture the cell wall and how does it entice, uh, how does it produce certain vitamins and nutrients that are helpful to us and so on. So it gets to the rest of our body. We'll talk a little bit more about that. So this symbiosis can turn if we feed it right, if we have the wrong population, and many of us have, into a dysbiosis, okay? So that these guts, this gut bacteria, are not the friendly kind, but the unfriendly kind. And like everything short in, in religion, there's never pure good and pure bad. Yeah? So it's an outgrowth of the Western mind that we always strive towards pure good and uh, want to get away from pure bad, yeah? Puritanism and what have you. The Chinese, in their wisdom, never had that. There's a theoretical state. Here's pure yin, one side of the extreme, and there's pure yang, but in reality, it never exists. In their way of thinking is, there's a greater yin, that means there's a predominance of yin, and once there's more predominance, it never gets to the absolute, you already turn into yang. Yeah? So if you remember the beautiful sign where one tear flows into the other. Yeah? So we never get rid of the other. So in the gut, it's a balance. And the balance is about 80, 90%, 85%, let's say, good guys, 15% bad guys, and you're happy. If the bad guys uh, overgrow, you have too many of these 100 trillion bacteria being of a kind you don't like, and you would be very amazed to find out what you all have in your healthy gut. There's about every toxic, dangerous, flesh-eating bacteria in there, which you never want to hear about. Okay? It's right there. Okay? But it's controlled because the other guys don't uh, take care that it doesn't get enough food. Yeah? And too much food because everyone wants to eat and they live in this kind of um, co um, happy, happy biotope with each other. Now, I'll talk a little bit more about that. So what we do, the structure tonight will be that I'll talk a little bit and then you can ask questions if you have some and then I'll continue talking, yeah, so that you have time. So that means please don't interrupt me right now. So, TI symptoms are manifold and there's one nation in the world who has the most of them, which are us. Yeah? There's no nation in the, on the surface of the world has more GI problems than America, which has nothing to do with the way uh, our guts are constructed and everything to do with lifestyle and environmental factors, and dietary factors. We'll talk about that a little bit. And the symptoms that are very, very, very prevalent, and you know, everybody has them, many people have them, the preponderance of the population has them, are bloating, are heartburn, are constipation, are intestinal cramps, are forms of diarrhea, are signs of, or symptoms of, not feeling well after eating. Yeah? Which is actually not how it exactly should be. The fact that people eat and feel lousy, sort of now eating something ridiculous or overeating or whatever, being invited to a six meal French uh, dinner, it's a whole other story with lots of alcohol, then obviously you're supposed to feel bad. Uh, at least if you don't know how to handle it. The French don't feel bad because they go very slow. But we always are already, already overeaten after the second course. So we have these symptoms and they are very, very prevalent. You know, if you look at the, the drug sales, you will notice that the most highest, some of the highest selling medications, sort of cholesterol, uh, are all GI related. You know, heartburn related, reflux related uh, medication. Yeah? And the mantra in Western medicine is always, it's acidity. Yeah? Not the economy, it's acidity. <coughs> and uh, that is a limiting, as we believe, we'll do more alternative medicine, and preventative medicine, that's a limiting paradigm, and you'll find out why that is. So what do you do? You have bloated, you're gassy, you have times of diarrhea, your times are constipated, um, and somehow you feel like your food doesn't become you well, you go to a doctor. The doctor will maybe do a stool test, if you're lucky, 
uh, he will do a normal blood test, which normally doesn't show anything. Uh, then he will do a, a gastroscopy, an upper, upper PI, or a colonoscopy uh, and examine endoscopically your uh, esophagus and your stomach and your colon. And the intercell in general, short of yes, cancers do exist, yes, there's autoimmune diseases and Crohn's and also colitis in your gut. The intercell in 90 some percent of the people is you do not have cancer. Okay? So here you're bloated, you're gassy, you're constipated, you have diarrhea, you feel bad after eating, but God, thank God you don't have cancer. Well, so what do you do now? Well, you don't have cancer. That's normally antagonist acid. That's normally the, the answer of Western medicine. Hold on, I have to put that thing on. I forgot about this. <coughs> so, so, that leaves you in a somewhat difficult position. You know, because you don't really have an understanding about the underlying factors why this thing is so prevalent and so frequent. You, know, you have not the slightest idea. It's the usual thing in medicine, there's no trick in medicine. You know, you come with a symptom, the doctor gives it a name. Yeah, let's say you have muscle aches. He translates that into fibromyalgia, which means muscle aches. And then you go home. Okay, so now you know what it is. I mean, you don't, you're still not helped really, but you have a name for the subject. Yeah? Like, you know a rich doctor who names these things. So medicine has a ritualistic effect, uh, an aspect. So on top of that, on top of that, there is now, and that is something, you know, doctors and physicians and nutritionists and, and um, practitioners who have a slightly different paradigm than the your Western ones. It's not cancer and it's acidity. It's a Western paradigm, basically. Um, look at other factors and see that the gut actually can be involved in a ton of different symptoms that seemingly have nothing to do with intestines. Okay? There's a young woman who has PMS and has, you know, gets breast tenderness and bloated and feels like hell for 10 days before her cycle. And, uh, and what is it? Okay. Something to do with the gut. Normal, the food allergies are yeast. There is a elderly woman also who has jo suddenly joint achiness. Uh, and runs to a rheumatologist and finds out it's not rheumatoid arthritis, okay, because she doesn't have an autoimmune disease. And it actually there's a little bit degenerative stuff, like we all have, you know, if you do x-rays, we all find this degenerative stuff, even in younger people, which normally means nothing, okay, because people with lots of degenerative changes have no symptoms, and others with hardly anything have lots of symptoms. What is it? Well, it has something to do with what you put in your mouth. Yeah, and in that example, for example, uh, this woman had joint pains, and she obviously, what do you do when you have joint pains? You take a pain medication, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug, okay? And uh, then after a while, obviously the drug works as long as she takes it, but after a while, after four weeks, she notices she has more joint pain. Okay. So why is that now? Because, surprise, surprise, all the different anti-inflammatory drugs, ibuprofen, aspirin also, if you take that regularly, will cause leaky gut. Okay. And leaky gut was the problem in the first place, that part of the toxins that are now inside of that lumen, outside of us, somewhat get through this one layer of the intestines, this protective wall we have, gets through this, what's called tight junctions, where the, from cell to cell, there's this tightness, it opens up and whoosh, some toxins, bacteria, good get through. And as they get through, then obviously they overwhelm the immune system. The immune system goes in an alarm state and turns on anti-inflammatory substances itself. Okay? And one of the end results of an anti-inflammatory substance in your system and your immune system gets activated is the fact you get muscle and joint ache like you get with every honest 
fluke. Yeah, a very self-respecting flu. The flu virus okay, comes along and turns on your immune system and then your achiness with the flu is your immune system.